We're going to get the program going. I want to thank you for being a part of the 115th annual meeting of the Greater Beaumont Chamber of Commerce. We have Monsignor Salvador Collada, who's going to lead us through the invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are good, gracious, and loving, and you watch over us in all our ways. Today we give you thanks for the wonderful people in our Chamber of Commerce who endeavor to promote the well-being of our area by fostering industrial, commercial, and private enterprise for the benefit of our population. In particular this evening, we offer gratitude for Bill Scott and his company, the Trans Global Systems, who today is being honored for the, by the Chamber of Commerce. He is recognized for his expansive growth in his many interests in business, industry, and education, not only in our community, but also internationally. We're grateful also today for the presence of our governor, Greg Abbott. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to continue to bless, assist, and inspire him as he leads our state of Texas. Indeed, Heavenly Father, we pray for all civic officials that they may govern us always in keeping with our Constitution and your divine wisdom. Heavenly Father, our nation is experiencing such division in so many areas of our lives, especially even our civic life. We acknowledge that there is such animosity, vitriol, and lack of civility in public discourse, often exhibited even in physical violence. We humbly and earnestly implore you to help us to lift our actions in, in thoughts, words, so that we may reflect your words and your actions in sacred scripture, impelling us to greater love and cooperation with each other, to respect those who differ with us, and to work towards reaching conclusion consistent with yours. We ask this, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much, Monsignor. So, we're really pleased to have so many honored guests with us tonight. And this is going to be the only, I guess you would call it, audience participation part of the program. And I want to see how you do. I'm going to read them all off, and I want you to hold your applause until we're all done. So, we have Congressman Randy Weber, Texas Senator Brandon Creighton, Texas State Representative Dave Phelan, Texas State Representative James White, Texas Parks and Wildlife Commissioner Dick Scott, Jefferson County Judge Jeff Brannick, Jefferson County Commissioner, Eddie Arnold. Jefferson County Tax Assessor, Allison Gatz. Chambers County Judge, Dem Jimmy Silvio. Orange County Commissioner, Barry Burton. Beaumont Mayor, Becky Ames. Beaumont City Council, Mike Gatz. Port of Beaumont Commissioner, Pat Anderson. Port of Beaumont Commissioner, Bill Darling. Lamar. University President, Dr. Kenneth Evans. Lamar Institute of Technology President, Dr. Lonnie Howard. Lamar State College Port Arthur President, Dr. Betty Raynard. Lamar State College Orange, Dr. Tom Johnson. And Beaumont Independent School District Board Member, Mitch Templeton. How about a big round of applause? And by the way, you did great on the audience participation piece. At this time, I'm pleased to invite Ms. Mary Poole to the stage. Well, good evening.
Thanksgiving, ladies and gentlemen. Well, 2018 was an eventful year. Tonight, we celebrate the Chamber's accomplishments and important events that you've seen over the past year. We've prepared just a short video that illustrates some of the highlights. Let's watch that together. This year, the Greater Beaumont Chamber of Commerce added 100 new members and retained 87% of its membership. This retention rate exceeds the national average for chambers of our size. The Beaumont, Orange, and Port Arthur Chambers collaborated on the Navigating the Natchez Legislative Tour. State legislators and their staffs toured the waterways vital to the Texas and U.S. economy, attended informational sessions, and met with local business executives and community leaders to learn more about the energy hub of the country, its industry, culture, and cuisine. More than 400 people attended the Chamber's most successful legislative luncheon on record. Congressman Weber, Senator Creighton, Representative Phelan, and Port Executive Director Chris Fisher shared updates on activities involving our area. The past fiscal year, the thriving economy had an influx of new retail, restaurant, and service-based businesses. The Beaumont Economic Development Foundation worked with area organizations on initiatives that support business and workforce development. The Economic Development Team also expanded and improved its business retention and expansion program. Existing businesses created 80% of the new jobs in the area, furthering our goal to support the economic growth of long-standing member partners. The Chamber Foundation enjoyed a record number of attendees for the 8th grade leadership program, with 144 students representing 18 area middle schools participating. The Chamber Foundation also hosted the 15th Annual Public Service Candidate Workshop, and formed a first-time partnership with neighboring chambers from Silsby, Nederland, and Port Arthur, resulting in a record number of attendees. Spice of the Season, the Foundation's largest fundraiser, was a sellout benefiting Leadership Beaumont, Youth Leadership, and Mentorship. This year's Leadership class was the largest in more than 20 years, and YPO had more than 100 candidates evidencing the growth of that program. Every chamber board member was involved in multiple community activities, including the Gift of Life kickoff and the Harbor Butterfly release. Lobster Fest also enjoyed a banner year. Another key activity for the Chamber this year was work on the reaccreditation process. The nationwide search for a new president of the Chamber resulted in the engagement of a new president and CEO with more than 15 years of experience as a Chamber executive and an extensive background in economic development. President Bill Allen took charge of the Chamber in September and literally hit the ground running with multiple new ideas for economic expansion and cost reduction savings. You've just heard about some of the highlights from last year, but what about 2019 and beyond? As we look forward, our focus will be on several fronts. Retaining and attracting both new business and talent, advocating for business, providing comprehensive business services, and bringing together stakeholders to address important business and community priorities. This will position us to be the catalyst for business growth, the convener for leaders and influencers and a champion for a stronger community. Folks, you're at the 115th annual meeting of the Greater Beaumont Chamber of Commerce. That speaks volumes. Without our volunteers, we wouldn't be able to offer the many programs and services that we do. Thank you to both our volunteers and our members for supporting this great organization. Enjoy your evening. Well, it is now my pleasure to introduce you to the incoming Chairman of the Board of the Greater Beaumont Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Pat Anderson. Thank you, Mary. As my official act as Chairman, it is my pleasure to present you with a small token of our appreciation for your service during the year. We gratefully acknowledge your willingness to serve the Chamber during this important time. The video we have just seen illustrates just a few of the accomplishments realized during your term of office. And Mary's saying is always, girls rule. Funny, Pat. You're so funny. Well, with a great promise of new ideas, excellent leadership, recognition, and a true desire to be the best, the Greater Beaumont Chamber of Commerce has made a commitment 
to making a difference in our community, where we work, where we live, where we play, and where we worship. It's been a privilege and an honor to serve this community, and I promise you that Bill Allen and Pat Anderson are poised to do amazing things. But you know what? They can't do it without you. So I'm going to give you a challenge tonight. Be the leaders that others want to follow and be the followers that others want to lead. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. At this time, I'd like for the 2019 Board of Directors of the Chamber of Commerce to stand, please, if you're here. <laughs> Folks, these are the individuals that will help shape the direction of the Chamber this year, and we couldn't do it without them, and we can't definitely do it without you. At this time, it's my honor to uh, introduce Judge Jeff Brannick to the podium, please. It is an honor and a distinct pleasure for me to have the opportunity to introduce our guest speaker here tonight. But before I get started on the introduction, let me say that Mary, Mayor Ames came up to me before, well, while I was eating my salad and said, look, please do me a favor. She said, you know, would you mind expressing the city's appreciation. She said, I know you're speaking for the county, but please express the city's appreciation for the many, many trips that Governor Abbott made to Beaumont and Jefferson County in the aftermath of Harvey. And I want to say that that's true. And one of the things that she and I are both most appreciative of is the fact that he didn't just come here for, the, for a photo opportunity. He came here to listen. He came here to see what the needs are, were, and he came here to provide solutions and answers, and we'll both be deeply appreciative for a long time for that assistance. <laughs> Greg Abbott was born in Wichita Falls, Texas. When he was a young boy, his family, his dad was a stockbroker. They moved to Longview, Texas, where they lived for six years. Following that time there, they moved to Duncanville, where the governor excelled in track, and following graduation from high school, he went to the University of Texas, where he got his BBA in finance. Following his, obtaining his undergraduate degree, he went to the Vanderbilt University School of Law, where he graduated with Juris Doctorate in 1984. And I just noticed from reading about him that uh, he's five months older than me. <laughs> uh, I looked at a study Today, and Vanderbilt University is the second most prestigious law school in the entire United States. And the reason I know that is because I went to Baylor University School of Law and I did the study and Baylor ranked first. <laughs> Following his graduation from law school, he went to work with the Butler Binion firm in Houston. And after several years there, he became the judge of the 129th District Court in Houston, where he served for several years before George Bush, the governor of Texas at the time, appointed him as a justice of the Texas Supreme Court. He had a distinguished career at the Texas Supreme Court. After being appointed, he won two more terms, and then he went back into the private practice of law. Following a few years in the private practice, he ran for attorney general. He was successful in that election. And uh, during his time in office as the Attorney General, he did a fan fantastic job bringing litigation, defending Texas against federal overreach, and protecting our religious liberties in Texas. And for that, we'll always be extremely appreciative. He was the 50th Attorney General of Texas. In 2014, he won election as, as the 48th Governor of the State of Texas, and I want to tell you, since he's been elected, Texas has been a job-creating machine. We are... <laughs> when Texas is judged against other nations, we are the 10th largest economy in the world. Do you realize Texas' economy is bigger than Canada's? We don't have any walleye in Texas, but everything else we've got them beat on. 
Uh, he has done a phenomenal job in Texas, and I couldn't count it a better honor than to appear before you tonight and have the pleasure of introducing you to our governor, Greg Abbott. And uh, also, I want to thank Judge Brannick. As you were covering in your introductory remarks, during the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey, I came over here, I lost track, it may have been about 10 times or so. Uh, sometimes on a weekly basis, somebody asked me if I was registered to vote here. Uh, but I want to thank you, Judge, for all that you did. Every single time I came here, you were there. And you were out working for the people of Jefferson County being very responsive and showing your experience at being able to deal with a challenge like this. It made it a whole lot easier uh, to make sure that we provided for the people of Jefferson County what they needed. So thank you for stepping up and your tremendous leadership to people here in Jefferson County. And every time I, I came, it was like there was a ray of sunshine coming down. It didn't matter how dire the circumstances were, Mayor Becky Ames was there with her, with her big smile. No matter how challenging things were, she always radiated that pretty smile. Mayor, you did a fabulous job. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your services, Mayor of Beaumont. I want to thank your Congressman, Randy Weber. I'm going to cover in more detail momentarily what you did, but let me tell you, you know and I know, and I'm going to make sure they know, we would not be where we are and where we're going in the recovery stage without what you and the Texas congressional delegation did. So, Randy, I'm, I'm going to give you some numbers here in a second, but thank you very much for your friendship, and thank you for what you've done for your district. And I know that the, neither I would be where I am, nor would the state of Texas be where it is, without your tremendous state representative as well as state senator. Uh, I know that Dade Phelan is here, Senator Brandon Creighton is here, and James White may be here. I did not see him stand up earlier when his name was called out. But thank you all for serving in both the Texas House and Texas Senate. Well, it's a pleasure to gather here tonight with the, uh, among other people, the, the Greater Beaumont Chamber of Commerce. And I want to thank uh, this chamber uh, for its long-standing economic development prowess, for bringing more jobs to the entire region, as you saw articulated so well uh, in that video. But uh, also, uh, there are so many other stories that can be told and will be told about what is going on in the Greater Beaumont area, about economic development. But we appreciate the role that the chamber has played for providing an economic engine for Southeast Texas. Now, the economic might of Beaumont itself altered the arc of the story of Texas. You all know the story. It goes back to the days of Spindletop, which put Texas on the path to becoming what we are now, which is the energy capital of the entire world, the entrepreneurs, and the innovative spirit, the sparked spindle top, remains vibrant across Texas today and right here in Southeast Texas. The legacy of spindle top lives on in this current day through businesses and business leaders, business leaders like Bill Scott and his company, Trans Global Solutions. Now listen, there's a lot of good businessmen and women across this region and across the state of Texas. But there is a difference between a good businessman and a great businessman. A good businessman is one who does a good job of making sure that the company has a good bottom line. A great businessman does that, but also ensures that the bottom line of his community excels. Bill Scott is a great businessman. He's done so much to help Trans Global Solutions grow and create more jobs for hardworking Texans across this region. But he's also done so very much to build and strengthen communities across 
all of Southeast Texas. I want to thank him personally for all that he's done for higher education, serving on the Board of Regents for the Texas State University system. And I want to thank Bill and Transglobal Solutions for helping families put their lives back together after Hurricane Harvey. Through the Hope After Harvey initiative, they partnered with other businesses and other organizations to rebuild homes that were destroyed or damaged by the hurricane here in Jefferson County as well as in other counties across the region. And I thank Transglobal Solutions for being one of these leaders of the Texas economic engine, but also for doing more than that, for going on and being a good corporate citizen for our great state. Bill, thank you. And thank you to Trans Global Solutions for all you do. It's an award very well deserved. <laughs> but seeing the way that Bill and Trans Global Solutions responded to the hurricane, seeing the way that Judge Brannick and your mayor and, and everybody in this room responded, I tell you what, I was asked two weeks ago. What moment in your life made you most proud to be a Texan? It was actually this month and last month, last year, that made me most proud to be a Texan. To see the way that our fellow Texans stepped up to help each other out in the aftermath of that hurricane was unlike anything either I or anybody else had ever witnessed before. It was the greatest example of unity. You know, you made, uh, uh, Father, in your remarks, in your prayer, that the country seems divided. And yeah, there are times when the country does seem divided. I'll tell you this. I've never seen a state or a country or a people as united as Texans were coming together to help each other in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey. Beaumont was flooded, Port Arthur was flooded, Houston was flooded, many regions were flooded, and, and time after time you saw people get out their own boats and go out and on what used to be roadways that turned into riverways, and they just went out to help a fellow Texan, and it was captured on TV time and again. You would see how these people who going up on the boat would come across somebody, and here's the thing about it. When they came up to someone, it didn't matter what race they were. They didn't ask what religion you have or what your background was. It didn't matter if you were a man or woman. It didn't matter what was the history of who you were. All that matters is that you were a Texan who needed help. And by God, a Texan was going to help you out and pull you out of that water and put you into that boat and save your life. That is what Texans are all about. <laughs> Hurricane Harvey could have ripped us apart. Instead, it brought us together. And it showed that no earthly force is more powerful than Texans helping Texans. You know, I have a comment about challenges, and that is that there is no challenge that we can't overcome. And when I say that, I, I realize, having been on the floor earlier, shaking hands and taking pictures with the people I had never met before, that at least half this room, maybe more than half this room, doesn't really know the background about why in the world is their governor in a wheelchair. Judge Brannick was talking about how when I became a lawyer, I went to Houston, Texas. I was a young lawyer in Houston, Texas, and one day went out for a jog. And while I was out jogging, a huge tree crashed down and hit me on the back, right in the middle of my back, and it fractured vertebrae in my spinal cord, leaving me forever paralyzed and forever needing to use the wheelchair that I remain in today. Every time I tell that story, there are people shaking their heads wondering, man, how slow is that guy jogging to get hit by a fallen tree? <laughs> but candidly, it, it was that accident that helped me understand what the people of Jefferson County were going through as they tried to deal with the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey. 
was that accident that helped me understand in some way, not the fullness of it, but in some way, what those families were going through who were involved in the school shooting at Santa Fe High School. Because here's what I learned. Because it was after the accident that broke my back that I went on to become that state district judge and Supreme Court justice and attorney general and now governor. And what I learned is what you already know. And that is our lives are not defined by how we're challenged. Instead, we get to define our lives by the way that we respond to the challenges we face. That is what Texas is all about. Well, dealing with challenges is not just the immediate aftermath of a challenge, such as the first 30 days after a hurricane. Now we're into the long phase of the response here in the Jefferson County region. Anybody who was here at the time of Hurricane Ike knows that we're still working to put back together the pieces in the aftermath of Hurricane Ike. But we're still working in even more aggressively to make sure that we get people back in their homes, that we get the communities back going again. And we're going to do more. We're going to do more than just rebuild after Hurricane Harvey. We are going to rebuild Jefferson County, Southeast Texas, the entire Gulf Coast region better than it was before Hurricane Harvey even hit. Now to spur that rebuilding, I'm proud to let you know that Texas has already amassed more than $30 billion to help respond to that rebuilding. And that brings me back to Congressman Weber. Thank you. Thank the Texas delegation. They're the ones who made sure that the federal government was going to step up and provide us the funds that we need. It is Congressman Weber and his team who provided more than $30 billion already to help us rebuild. Congressman, thank you so very much. More than $15 billion of that will go toward rebuilding housing. More than $10 billion will go to what are called mitigation projects, such as flood prevention, which, as we now know, there's a lot of that that needs to be done around here, Mayor. Billions more are helping businesses get up and running. I want you to know this. We have received more money faster in response to Hurricane Harvey than Texas has received in response to any disaster in the history of our state. Thank you so very much for helping us achieve that milestone. But this is the important thing. Think about this. This was the largest natural disaster in our state's history. And despite the fact that we went through that this past year, Texas is stronger than it has ever been. And that's especially true when it comes to the Texas economy. And that is due in part to the men and women who work right here in Beaumont and what you're doing to grow the economy, to create jobs, and to attract investment to Texas. For example, get this, Texas has led the United States of America in exports for 16 years in a row now. And this region is a big part of that success. Over the past decade, Exports from Beaumont and Port Arthur have increased by 500%. And those exports are one of the reasons why CNBC earlier this year named Texas the number one state in the United States of America for doing business. You, you are part of what made Texas the number one ranked economy in the United States. Get this, over the past year, Texas has added more new jobs than any other state. Over the past four years, the state has added 800,000 new jobs. Do this math with me real quick. Take every man, woman, and child who lives in Beaumont and multiply it times six, and it will not equal a number larger than the number of new jobs that we've created in Texas 
just in the past four years. The Texas economy is humming and you are a big part of that. The consequence of it, our unemployment rate is at all time lows. In Beaumont, your unemployment rate is four percentage points lower than it was four years ago. And Texas has the fastest growing GDP of any state in the United States. GDP, of course, is the gross domestic product. That's the aggregation of all the goods and services that are produced and consumed. So if you have produced anything in this state, whether it's a good or service, if you've consumed anything, you have contributed to Texas's GDP, which is $1.7 trillion a year. As Judge Brannick noted earlier, he, he said that if Texas were its own country, we would have our tenth, the 10th tenth largest economy in the entire world. Now, I gave you the comparison of Canada. The te and I, to to reemphasize, the Texas economy is larger than Canada. It's also larger than the economy of Australia. And believe it or not, the Texas economy is actually even larger than the economy of Russia. And that makes me more powerful than Putin. <laughs> Just a joke. And the good news is that for Southeast Texas, things are just getting started. I want to share with you, in, in fact, I'm, I'm going to be telling in part people that I know who know more about this than I do because I, I was talking to the ExxonMobil tables here earlier. Part of what I'm about to tell you comes from them, but part I want you to know, I, I deal with CEOs of the oil and gas production companies in the Permian Basin out in West Texas. I work with them on a weekly basis, helping them build out facilities so they can actually pipe more oil and gas to this region. And what I know is what they are planning on doing, when I say they, not any one particular company, but all these companies together, will be doing over the next decade. Over the next decade, they will be adding more than 50,000 more rigs just in the Permian Basin. There'll be more in the Eagle for Shell, there'll be more up in North Texas. Everything they produce has to go somewhere. I know from talking with them as well as the companies that want to be on the receiving end of that. They are looking at building massive facilities beginning at the Louisiana line, going across the entire Gulf Coast all the way down to Brownsville. Whether you're in Jefferson County, Orange County, or going all the way down to Cameron County, there's going to be tremendous growth, tremendous economic opportunities to connect with the voluminous oil and gas being produced out in West Texas. And one of those opportunities is tied to the incredible port of Beaumont. That port is a veritable gold mine for this entire region. You need to be able to capitalize on this port in ways that tap not only to the oil and gas sector, but all the goods that will be produced around here and make sure that we are able to expand it more. And I'll tell you this, that port was very valuable in my discussions uh, with the administration in Washington, D.C. in the aftermath of the hurricane, because one thing I made very clear, as many of you here know, it's the most important point for the launching of military operations whenever there's a worldwide emergency. If ever our port here in Beaumont is backlogged by some disaster like Hurricane Harvey, it compromises our national security. They got that message. Among other things that they funded was $3.2 billion for what's called the Coastal Spine that goes from the Sabine Pass all the way down past Galveston to make sure that this entire region is going to be more hurricane proof. And so that port, once all this gets built out, will be better protected going forward. And then your workforce development. Your workforce development attracts employers to this region. I applaud Lamar University, your multiple regional two and four year programs for all you're doing because listen, there's a reality. And that is when it comes to education, one size does not fit all. Not everyone wants to go off to some school in some other region of the country and go four years or longer or something like that. Some people just want to get out and have a good paying job. 
I got to know one of those people. His name is Justin. Justin is a guy, he, he, four years of college wasn't for him. He just wanted to go to, to Texas State Technical College and get a welding certificate. And he did. His first year on the job was 2013, and he made $130,000. His second year on the job was 2014, he made $140,000. I told Justin, man, if this governor thing doesn't work out for me, I'm going to TSTC and I'm getting a welding certificate and go make some real money. <laughs> that shows the opportunity that Beaumont and this region hold. It doesn't matter what economic strata you come from, what background you come from, what your educational qualifications are, everyone's gonna have an opportunity to have a good paying job that will contribute to what I anticipate being very massive, impressive growth for the entire Beaumont region. So thanks to the leaders here tonight, working together we have achieved tremendous ec economic success in this region and across Texas and working together, we have begun the process of piecing things back together in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey. What I know is that working together, we can and we will build an even brighter future for the entire Beaumont area. Because in Texas, anything and everything is possible. God bless you all. God bless Beaumont. God bless the great state of Texas. Thank you so much. Governor, we know there's a lot of things that we do here. And from the port, from the chamber, we're gonna do everything we can. But it all stems on the great leadership that you have for this great state of Texas, and we wanna thank you. And I have here, look here, the state of Texas, some spices for you to carry back. I know that you may not be able to carry them with you, but we're gonna get them to you that you can't get there in Austin, but we got them right here in Beaumont, Texas for you. Go see this. What other state do you know that makes things in the shape of their state? <laughs> this is Texas. Amen. Hey, we, I'm going to get that to you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Spindle Top Award is the highest honor that the Greater Beaumont Chamber of Commerce can award. It's my pleasure and my honor to share you a brief video that illustrates some of the many reasons why we are proud to present this award to this evening's honorees. A nationally recognized provider of rail transportation and heavy civil construction services began operations in 1975 at the Port of Beaumont with the Port Grain Elevator operated by Continental Grain Company. You know, the Port of Beaumont has been partners with Transglobal Solutions and the Scott family since 1986 when they were at Conorail and doing our switching operations. And, and it has really been a great partnership uh, uh, since then. Our first bulk terminal that we established out here was established through a partnership with uh, Transglobal Solutions and the, Scott, and the Scott family. And that is still one of our major terminals today with our dry bulk terminal. It's now operated by Kinder Morgan. But that terminal got its start, start through our partnership with the Scott family and Transglobal Solutions. So they've been wonderful partners for many, many years. Uh, the, the port back in 1986 uh, was uh, one of their early partnerships, one of their early contracts, and uh, they have uh, done a great job. Uh, today, they still do all of our switching operations and uh, we market that quite heavily at the Port of Beaumont. Our rail connections are very good and uh, our interchange with the Class 1 railroads is all handled by TGS and that really makes the port a very competitive port, a very viable port. So they're still such a very valuable member uh, of the, our Port of Beaumont family and uh, one of the great partnerships that uh, we'll, we'll have or that we have or will ever have at the port. Originally named Econorail Corporation, the company was started by Bill Scott and his brother Dick with just $3,500 and a pickup truck. 
Well, as you know, we have the third largest port in the United States. It supports the largest refinery in the United States and chemical plants that make the constituent ingredients for virtually every consumer product in the country and in the world. And uh, Transglobal is, is absolutely necessary to the functioning of our ports and our waterways, to the transportation of, of finished products from the refineries and the chemical plants to the transportation of aggregate and loading of materials that make their way to all parts of the country and the world. Well, Transglobal is all along the waterway and the Scott brothers, Bill Scott in particular, has been such an important fixture in Jefferson County and our economic growth over the last 15 years that I don't think his impact on our community can be overemphasized. He's just truly a businessman's businessman. And not just a businessman, but he's used his talents and his treasures to improve the community. You know, he's involved in everything from supporting Lamar University, the Boy Scouts of America, to his own church, to the Port Arthur YMCA. And if I tried to make a list of all his philanthropic uh, excesses, uh, we'd probably be here all day. But extremely generous family uh, that loved this community. He grew up in Port Arthur. Uh, went to Lamar, is, is now the chairman of the Texas State University system, and uh, he's done us proud here in Jefferson County. In the last 43 years, TGS has constructed more than a thousand miles of rail, completing more than a hundred miles a year for the last five years. Since 2013, multiple projects have involved moving millions of cubic yards of dirt per year and switching in excess of 15 million rail cars at a yearly average of half a million rail cars. Currently, TGS owns or operates in excess of 200 locomotives, storing in excess of 3,000 rail cars per day at its Cedar Port Industrial Park and Car Storage Facility. Since 1979, TGS has constructed, owned, and operated seven deepwater ocean terminals which handled 15 million tons of bulk products in 2005. Transglobal clients include a roll call of the top producers in the country, ranging from facilities in Beaumont, Port Arthur, Houston, and Sweeney, Texas. In 2005, the company divested the terminals division to Kinder Morgan Energy Partners. TGS continued developing terminal projects in the U.S. Gulf and on the Mississippi River. I think my first um, interaction with TGS was um, at the Port of Beaumont. We were receiving uh, ships in, aggregate ships in, that we would then take from the port to our asphalt plant. And, uh, and Bill and TGS at that time was unloading the ships for us there at the port. It's impressive how, how large their business has grown through the years. And, and clearly, Bill has focused that he wanted it to be a family business. And you know, by having his sons involved, and it's nice to know that I can pick up the phone and and call Bill or call James, and uh, that there's not a lot of layers there, and, and they're involved with all parts of it. So that's pretty neat. Uh, you know, the next phase uh, beyond the the rail construction, uh, they've got a really exciting project um, in Chambers County, the, the Cedarport Industrial Park, and. Um, Probably a couple of years ago, Bill and I started talking about their their efforts there and what they were doing, and um, it kind of evolved that we want to be a part of that too. And uh, we've subsequently decided to, to put in a, a, a terminal there on their property, working with uh, with them. And uh, we've got that up. Uh, I came online the first of this year, so uh, we're really excited about the growth that's happening out there and all the expansions that are going on now and will be going on in the future and hope to be a part of that with them as well. Beginning in 2015, Valero Terminal Distribution Company and TGS Development began operating the PI dock at Port Arthur for the Valero Port Arthur Refinery. This 50-50 joint venture handles in excess of 40 million barrels of crude each year. TGS continues its growth with expansion into industrial real estate development to complement its construction and terminal business. In addition to the PI dock at Valero, TGS created the Cedarport Industrial Park. 
This expansion is comprised of 11,000 acres in Chambers County that lie adjacent to Baytown, Texas. The park includes in excess of 50 miles of railroad, a container barge dock, and a liquids dock on Cedar Bayou with more than a mile of waterfront adjacent to the Houston Chip Channel and more than six miles of waterfront on the Cedar Bayou Barge Canal. Transglobal and the Scott family have been mentors and public servants with outstanding contributions to the youth of our area. I have great respect and admiration for my friend, Bill Scott, and I truly believe that he is a person who makes the world a better place by his presence being in it. He is a very successful entrepreneur and businessman, and he has a heart of gold. I have observed firsthand that Bill has a very positive attitude. He never gives up, and he uses his time, talent, and treasure to help other people and to affect positive change in this world. One program that is particularly near and dear to Bill's heart is the Boy Scouts of America. Bill achieved the prestigious rank of Eagle Scout in 1961 from Troop 65 in Port Arthur and has never stopped demonstrating leadership and commitment of the scouting program. While building and managing his very successful family business, Bill always found time to serve and volunteer his time and effort with the Three Rivers Council as a member of the executive board, a committee member and chair, as well as the past council president and area two, three president of the Southern region, which includes just about the entire state of Texas. As long as I have known Bill, he has always been willing to help, support, and give good advice to the scouting program. Years ago, Bill was invited to the Philmont Scout Ranch in Cimarron, New Mexico, to give advice about repairing an old train and the tracks. And while there, he had the opportunity to help a group of scouts who were working on the train's tracks, and Bill showed them how to drive railroad bikes. Now that is what I call hands-on leadership. The company employs a skilled professional labor force and operates more than 400 pieces of construction equipment, trucks, and locomotives to efficiently, dependably, and confidently complete any project. Even with the constant expansion and the fast pace of operations, there's still time for participation with the families of the team that keeps Transglobal centered and mindful of the principles on which it was founded. Time to work and time to enjoy life are both important to the well-being of the people who make the world better. The tremendous growth and success of Transglobal Solutions are the result of the tenacity and hard work that went into building the company. Good corporate citizenship and dedication to the success and growth of the petrochemical industry are the hallmarks of the business that the Scott family built together. The Scott family continues to conduct business with integrity and concern for their customers, the families of their employees, and the communities in which they operate. Safety, quality, and reliability are the guiding principles of the company as it goes forward into another generation. Congratulations to the Scott family and the men and women of Trend Global Solutions. Thank you for your many contributions to the economy of Southeast Texas and the world. Well, I have a uh, short version and a long version. Can, can I have a show of hands for the long version? <laughs> I want to thank all of you that have come out tonight. I see a lot of friends, and, uh, and I was surprised that some of our business associates came from a long way away, and, and uh, it was really nice of you to come and participate with the family in this. <clears throat> I also, I want to thank the chamber for choosing to honor us. Uh, you know, this is, this is a, uh, saying yes is, comes with a price. Y'all all understand that, right? <laughs> but uh, we, we really appreciate it. We've been a part of the community for a long time, and we, 
and we appreciate the, uh, the chamber for thinking of us. I also want to thank the thousands of employees that we've had over the last 44 years that have, that have, uh, that have made this possible. We sure didn't do it all by ourselves, and, and we, uh, we really appreciate all of them. I also want to thank our governor for coming out tonight he, and for his kind words to us, but at, at the end of the day, we all know that he's done a lot to help this area after the storm. And uh, it, was, it was really nice of him. What you don't know is, is trying to get over here, they had to go through that storm that we all see on our phones now. And uh, they, were, they, were, they had a really rough time. They s slipped out of here quick because they're trying not to have to go through that again to get back to Austin. I also want to thank Paula Bethay. You know, Paula uh, put the video together and, and uh, had an awful lot to do with tonight's event and uh and she's she's been great to work for and you know the 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 video brings up a lot of no nostalgic moments for both dick and i and i think my sons are too young for nostalgia but uh i also want to thank all of our elected officials that showed up tonight and that and that it, we know uh that we appreciate their attendance we appreciate what they contribute to our community you know uh, we as business people would not be able to have the success we we all work for without all the hard work they do for us. Uh, I want to this time to make a few introductions. I'll try to go quickly. The first person I have to introduce, and, and as I go through this, spouses, y'all y'all standing up is optional. The employees, you got to get off of the chair, okay? <laughs> now, but I'm going to start with my wife. And I, I, none of this would be possible for me without her and her support. We, we've been married 38, going on 39 years. And, uh, you know, the fact that we raise these kids is a wonder. But, <laughs> but having said that, you know, she's, she's been a really great gal, and, and uh, uh, I, I love her very much. Uh, Dick and Dodie got out of here, but I, I wanted to introduce them, but we also don't want them to have to ride through that storm two times in one evening. Uh, I'm gonna, now I want to ask, of course, Will is up here, but Lindsay, raise your hand. Will and Lindsay and Jamie. Yes, and, and Jamie, that's James's wife, and I'm going to out Jamie. She's, she's pregnant with her second baby they found out last night. I, I told him, I told him I, I was happy that he wasn't shooting blanks. <laughs> the, uh, the third son, we tried really, really hard to get him here from, from Dallas, but I don't know if any of you have been looking at the weather, but all the airports within 100 miles of Dallas were shut down this afternoon with that terrible storm that went through. We didn't get Richard down here, and uh, he's a professional student at SMU. <laughs> yeah, but he says he's getting out in December. His brother James says we hope so in the text. <laughs> but uh, I want to, I want to, uh, you know, also say that the boys are now my partner, and the, that's the result of their uncle's generosity. Now, how many of you know? Yeah, have a brother that would that would uh, help your sons buy out his interest. Uh, talking about employees, I want to introduce a few of our employees, uh, and I'm going to ask the like I said, the girls don't need to stand up, but I want the guys to stand up. Dan Orsini, Dan's been our CFO since the mid '80s. And uh, he's, he's handled the business side of, the, of our activities so that maybe I could go out and sell another project or put together another deal. Now, we couldn't have done it without him. Elliot Sumner and, and his wife, Maureen, Elliot wasn't able to attend tonight, but he's been our in-house CPA since the early 80s. And uh, now Matt Fleming, Matt's one of the next generation. Matt and Chrissy. 
He's our VP Business Development in, in, there in Houston. Uh, some, another that's not able to be with us, Gary Mixon and his wife Paige, they, they were involved with, uh, with a lot of our developments through the 90s and early 2000s, and, and uh, then he got to retire at 45 or something, you know. But uh, next, John Klein, John's Vice President and General Manager of the TGS Cedarport Project that you saw some of. Uh, next is Johnny Pavlika. Johnny's been director of the rail operations for a long, long time, and he works directly with the port and all the other industries along the coast that we do business with. Chris Warner is our locomotive fleet manager. Chris, raise your hand. Uh, Mark Byers, who's who's a local, who's local person, and he's he's director of project development on the rail construction and maintenance side. Brent Blackswell, that I'm giving a, a, a promotion to, he's director of purchasing, a, <laughs> and he does so much other for us. I, I think he's the general go-to guy. And uh, uh, Jan Dubos that does insurance with us. She she's come back and worked for the company. She worked worked for us for many many years, and then was with Kinder Morgan for a while. And finally, Carrie Dalio. Now, Carrie, you got a. I'm going to make you stand up. This is, this is my assistant, but, but I have to tell you, I think she's my deputy. And, uh, you know, it, without Carrie, I wouldn't have a life, and I don't think Gay or, or the boys would either. No. Okay, and, and finally, as far as this recognition is concerned, I want to, want to mention Craig Cavalier. Craig's here. Craig's been our lawyer since the mid-'80s, and... and you know, you can't imagine how many contracts and and how many projects that he was involved with. He and and Gary and Dan and Matt and and so many others in our in our group have. Uh, you know, they were involved in all the development we had in the in the 90s and early 2000s, and including the transaction with Kinder Morgan that that. Uh, that sort of changed our lives. I thought I was gonna to get to retire, but uh, that was 05, so that shows how good a job I've done of that. Uh, and Craig's been, you know, a hard, in the heart of making many of the deals and drafting countless contracts necessary to grow the business and buy and sell various assets. And to close this out, I wanna talk, I wanna acknowledge a few things. Uh, uh, looking back over 45 years, I want to <clears throat> I want to uh, I want to recognize my mom and dad. Uh, mother passed away recently. After a hundred years, five months, and eight days. And she managed our office until she was 85. You know, I, you know, I gotta. I also have to recognize Dick uh, uh, for the fact that you know, through a lot of those developments, you know, it was there were a lot of choices whether we could do the civil side of the business or the port terminal side of the business, and he he always uh, supported. Uh, so of course, you know, he did get a payday out of that, but, <laughs> but, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, he, he was always really supportive and we, we never would have gotten through all this. I also want to recognize some, some of the mentors that we had way all the way back to the 70s. Don Laird and Mike Rotniak with Great Lakes Carbon, who encouraged us to expand our construction business into the bulk terminal business to serve the Gulf Coast uh, refining industry. And uh, then Chuck and Penny, uh, Chuck Knutson, Chuck gave us our first job, he's here tonight. Chuck, raise a hand, stand up. You know, I think it was 1974 and he was at the Continental Grain Elevator. Y'all saw a picture of the grain elevator. And, uh, and that, was, that was our very first job. Uh, he, he was a mentor and a good friend, and later Chuck came to work for the company and 
in the 80s and stayed with us till we sold to Kinder Morgan and then uh, stayed with them for several years before he finally retired. Uh, and finally, I want to thank Will and James over here, especially Will, for pushing me to make another big investment in 2014 when I thought I was retired. <laughs> And uh, the investment in the purchase of 11,800 acres, which is the TGS Cedarport uh, Railroad and Industrial Park that you saw some pictures of, uh, I won't see its completion, but it's truly a multi-generational investment. And maybe, with their help, an old dog can learn some new tricks. <laughs> Thank you. So you can see with Bill talking about his employees and his family, how important this company is to our community and how important they are to him and the teamwork that they perform to make it the company that it is. And before we, include, before we conclude tonight, I wanna to thank our staff, our sponsors, our volunteers for helping to make tonight so special. Mary, I wasn't going to choke up. We, we couldn't be here without people before us like Mary through the times we went through. So we, we thank her so much for that. And I want to thank each and every one of you here for being a part of the Chamber of Commerce. Because without you, we couldn't be what we are. But we want to be the heartbeat of our community to grow up to its potential and to help serve. And we're there. And we thank you for your investment. And I would ask, thank you for being here tonight, ask you to travel safely, and we are adjourned.